Hello, welcome to the soul space. So did you guys all look at the eclipse today? Man, if I put these on in the studio, I don't even know where the monitor is. It's pretty crazy. I saw the eclipse. I, I actually saw the eclipse. I didn't think I would. I had a business meeting today, but I got out and I drove down the parkway and there was a big accident because somebody was probably looking up instead of where they were going. And <laughs> I had to take all these detours. It was kind of like Indiana Jones. But I made it home in time to put some crystals out on the patio and see the eclipse with my glasses. I hope you guys, you know, wore your special glasses, right? Oh, it was really cool. Um, definitely a once in a lifetime thing to see the planets that way. And you know, if you are tuned into the soul space every Monday night at seven, you guys know that the planets speak to me anyway. So when we saw this beautiful eclipse of the sun solar eclipse it was just really um a time to reflect on light and dark and what is it in my life that i need to release and let go of into the dark and what needs to be revealed from there and brought forward into the light so it was really pretty good stuff so let me see who's on and uh say hi to everybody in the soul space so i'm here every monday night i am georgia rose i am the founder of zenkuda soul space and we are a community and a platform for positive content for those of us on the journey to self-discovery and self-development uh, through the spiritual life. And every week I am here in the soul space and we do tarot and astrology. I am an evolutionary astrologer and a psychic. And uh, sometimes we have special guests. And basically I talk about the energy in the world and give guidance on how we can become more inspiring people and expand our lives to more love and more joy and I learn from all of you every week on how to do that through your own personal experiences so if you like the soul space and you want more you can find me on Zenkuda on YouTube and also on social media at Zenkuda on Facebook so let me say hi to who's in the soul space tonight I've got Monica here and Debbie Ann Deneen uh, three other people whoever they might be and I got Joanne Sarah Cheryl hey Cheryl um and I have Trish Dwyer and Deneen and Debbie Ann. So um, usually what I've been doing is reading an astrology chart at the end of every show, just randomly live. And um, so if you guys would be good enough to put your birth dates and if you know the time and place, either in the comments tonight or um, in the comments on our regular Facebook at Zenkuda Soul Space, I will pick somebody for the next several shows. So enter that drawing. Um, tonight I'm going to do tarot cards instead of picking an astrology reading just because the energy feels like that to me. So from time to time I'll do that. Um, I don't read cards on the show too often anymore because I didn't want it to become just a, a show about cards. Uh, to give you a little background about the soul space and what I really like to do here is, and what I want this energy to be for all of us, is more of an energy for um, connection with ourself and connection with the soul and self-development. And by that I mean just, you know, where can we improve our lives and where are the issues in our lives that we really need to, um, you know, maybe make stronger or what are the issues in our life that we need to um, work on, resolve, find re resolutions for healing, that kind of stuff. Which brings me to this week's astrology. So the eclipses, first we had that one on March 25th and then today's on April 8th. And the eclipses are an energy that absolutely brings change. The energy is going to be with us for about three to six months. Um, sometimes the changes will happen very rapidly, and sometimes they'll happen over the course of time. So you want to look and see wherever Libra and Aries is in your chart, because that is the themes that this is going to play out for you. Uh, some serious life direction changes coming, I will say, for most of us. And, you know, embrace that. Sometimes it's not easy, but we can definitely embrace it. I'd love to know how you guys are feeling about the changes and what's been happening for you in your lives. You can also call into the show. We're going to put that number up on the screen. And so hopefully tonight we'll give you some meaningful content, some content that uh, helps you uh, look into your own lives. So, you know, these eclipse glasses, when I got them, I thought they were broken because you couldn't see anything in them. And then I realized like they really are total darkness. But the really cool thing about them is when I looked at the sky, I could see the sun and nothing else. And it kind of made me think about the lens we look through in our lives. Like what's the lens we look through? And 
We oftentimes think about when things get hard or difficult, we think about we need to move to a different place. We need to move to different people or a different um, environment or situation. But maybe we just need to put on a different lens and maybe we need to look at where we're at in a different way. And that's really what the energy of this month is about. Um, it's about a lot of healing that can take place. There's a lot of healing with the planet Chiron in play this month and especially around the 15th and 16th of this month, which is coming up. And it gives us an opportunity for forgiveness and healing in our lives. And many times what we realize that we have to forgive is actually that someone that we know or someone in our life maybe has hurt us or wounded us or maybe even just done that through neglect. And what we really need to forgive is the fact that we know something they haven't learned yet, right? And so I think that's a great theme for this month is when things start to happen and we start to have those power dynamics and power plays that are going to happen, especially this last half of the month. Just remember there are people who don't know what you know and vice versa, right? We all have lessons to learn and we're all at different levels of spirituality and different levels of awareness. And sometimes when misunderstandings happen or we get into power struggles, it's because we don't know something the other person has already discovered or vice versa. And that leads to a lot of anger, a lot of arguments, and a lot of competition. So maybe if we took a step back this month and really used the energy of Aries, which is all about new direction. We just had this beautiful solar eclipse in Aries today. All about new direction. So let's try and find a new direction for our own healing. How can we take what the conflicts are in our lives and where the power struggles and power dynamics are and instead of needing to be in them and trying to resolve them from the inside out, maybe we could take a step back, observe them from outside and come into a place where we can learn to do it differently and just you know maybe let some things go, pick up what needs to be picked up and move on our merry way in a really healthy way in a new direction. So. I hope that you all understand that because I think that can enlighten a lot of us and lighten our load. So we take on so many things that we really don't have to take on. And if we could just realize, oh, that person doesn't know what I know, or you know what, maybe they're seeing it differently because they have more wisdom or more knowledge than even I do, right? It's not a bad thing to think that way and give balance to life like that. So um, Dragana says she's looking forward to a new chapter. I think a lot of us are. I think that um, a lot of us are in a place where we're waiting for the new chapter to start, and that's also the energy that we're in currently. So, you know, don't beat yourself up if you feel like you expect the train to be pulling out of the station, but you're still sitting in it. You're still sitting in there waiting for the conductor. The conductor's late coming to the train to start it. Um, that's the energy and will be for the rest of this month. After April 30th, things really start to move forward, and the train really starts to go on the track. Now is a time for us to very simply lay the track. Um, now is a time when the universe is going to give us a lot of insight and a lot of healing in order to come into more of a potential so that we can, when the train pulls out of the station, really be productive. So my best advice and my best guidance for the last two weeks of April that we're going into is try and whatever your goals are, whether they're small, whether they're big, whether they're business goals or personal goals, or whether they're goals with other people, whatever your goals are, my advice is for the last half of April, starting now, because we've had the eclipse already, I would really try to be in a progression towards those things. You know, you want a better relationship with so-and-so, well, act it. Change the words, change the um, dynamic of how you react and act to things. If you want a better job, start brushing up the resume, looking in the, the in, you know online for the job. If you want a material thing, start to really become more conservative about the way you spend your money. So that's what I mean by putting yourself in the progression of the energy, like it's already happened and you're on your way to it. Just like when we're sitting in that train at the station, I use the same analogy again, we're sitting in the train at the station, we're waiting it to pull out, we're waiting for the conductor to come on or everybody to get on board. We know where the train's going. We know what pretty much the 
journey is going to be. Like we might not know all the scenery, but we know how long it's going to be. We expect to be at a certain place at a certain time. So we're going to progress towards that. We're going to dream about it. We're going to think about it. We're going to plan on, oh, when the train finally gets to wherever it's going, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to see. This is where I'm going to be. That's progressive energy. You're progressing into the timeline, into the journey of what the goal is. And this month especially is a time when we need to be in the progression of whatever we want. And that's really true um, building potential into form. It is creating the manifestation of what you really want. So just remember that because it's going to be a lot of push and pull energy, um, especially coming up this week on the 10th, which I believe is Wednesday. We've got Mars and Saturn coming together in the sky. And that's going to be in Pisces. And when Mars and Pisces come together, it's an energy of um, push-pull, gas break. Um, Mars wants to move forward and Saturn limits it. So it's an energy of something that you really want to take action on because you find it fulfilling. Mars wants us to take action on things that are satisfying and fulfilling in our life. So it will come in and want to go forward in that energy. But Saturn is a planet whose energetic signature is limitation. It's conditioning. It's like you want something so bad, but you've always been told you couldn't do it or it was out of the norm or it wasn't what you really wanted, uh, what, what other people would really want for you, but it's what you wanted for yourself. You want to go towards it. You want to have that progressive energy, but there's something limiting. That's just the way the energy is now. So don't beat yourself up if you find yourself not being able to complete a task, not being able to get the home run. You know, that will all come. Right now, I think the energy is more about finding home base than it is getting the home run. So find what really is your passion, what really gives you that joy and what puts that lightness in your step and start to progress your plan towards that. That's really the energy of this month. Um, we also have an energy with the sun and Uranus coming in, which is an energy, and that's starting now, and it'll be with us for a few days. That's an energy of struggling to do something independently. It's an energy of you want to do something that's a little different from the norm, unique, but you're finding resistance for it. Um, that also plays in with this energy of, you know, slow and steady wins the race. It's going to be a push-pull, frustrating, gas break kind of an energy, so slow and steady is the way to do it. If you find something really frustrating you, walk away from it. Because when you go back to it, we're in Mer Mercury retrograde. So it's about when you go back to it, redo, regroup, rebuild, rethink. You know, it's all that. So don't get too frustrated because that can be an energy where you really do. Um, so a lot of you are giving me my, your birth dates. Really appreciate that. In the weeks to come, I'm going to be picking someone for the end of every show. So tune in. Usually what I will do is I will private message you or if I have your text or email, I will email you what show your uh, reading is going to be on. That way if you want to be live on the show for the last 15 minutes, you can call into the show and we'll do your reading live. All right. Uh, remember, I am an evolutionary astrologer. So if you're looking to find out, is he coming back? Is he leaving? Am I getting to win lotto? Am I going to buy a red car? I'm not your girl. But if you want to know the intention for your soul, if you want to know why you're really here in this lifetime, what your purpose is in your life direction, and do a little healing with me, then I'm your girl. Okay? So really serious here. I'm looking for deep and meaningful things, uh, deep and meaningful content. So thank you for joining me. Hey, Claire's on. Hey, Claire, how are you doing? I got Chris Colucci on. Cl Chris, I haven't talked to you in a while. hope things are going good. I've been watching your social media. Your daughter's adorable. Everybody, Everybody's children are getting so big at an alarmingly fast rate that I'm just like, poof. How could this possibly be, right? I don't know. The years are just going really fast. So on the 10th, we've got that um, that um, Sun and Uranus com combination, which is going to make us you know, feel a little bit restrained, a little bit restricted. But Wednesday is also a good day where you will get unique ideas. You just might not be able to implement them as well as we should. Um, and then further along in the week, I've got on the 11th, Mercury and the Sun come together. Um, that's actually a good energy for thinking and thoughts. So Thursday is going to be a good day where maybe we'll have some clarity and a little more quick thinking, a little more organization in our thoughts. Um, and then the 13th, we've got Mars and Pluto coming together in a, in a tension. 
And when that happens on the 13th, remember, I always say Mars is our action planet. Mars is where, what action do we take to really feel fulfilled and joyful and happy in our life, feel productive? That's our Mars, wherever Mars is in the chart. So when Mars goes up against Pluto, which Pluto likes to uh, reveal things that we have hidden, so Mars is also a planet of aggression. So when it comes into Pluto, who likes to reveal stuff, uh, you can have kind of a rough day that day. So just remember that the 13th, some things may be difficult um, that may get brought up from the depth uh, or revealed. But remember, the reason why it's happening and the reason is always healing. The reason for everything is always for us to find some form of healing that we can bring our lives to a larger evolutionary level. So like I said, this month is all about learning to do things in a different way. Things are going to come up. You're going to have some struggles. But I think we're really resourceful, um, especially uh, when the sun goes into Taurus later in the month. When the sun goes into Taurus, that's when we really find the resources for all these frustrating problems that we've had this past month and all of the things that we can't really get done, especially because Mercury is going to come out of um, retrograde at around the same time as, Taurus goes into, as uh, the sun goes into Taurus. And once we've got Mercury retrograde, which I think is until April 25th, and we've got Taurus going, the sun going into Taurus, that brings an energy where we can really become more productive and things move forward better. Right now it's glitchy. You're going to do the project. You're going to have to redo it a little bit. Um, so Kathy Gagliano's on. Hey, Kathy. Got a lot of people on tonight. Love to see that. So I am going to uh, pick some cards for people because I think that's the easiest way when I have this many people on. I have to watch my time tonight because I got started a little bit late. Um, so I'm just going to go down my comments and uh, do some cards. The only other thing I wanted to say about um, the energy astrology-wise this week is just to recap, this month is really a month where we're going to have things revealed. We're going to have some power struggles, and we're going to have some things that come forward and come up in our lives in order for us to have to be aware and look at them and do things differently. That could be personal emotional things. It could be bringing up things where you've really had some unresolved emotional issues, or it could be just regular practical three-dimensional projects. But whatever it is, the reason it's being revealed is because we're in an energy now and will be until the end of summer that is all about making things better, a new way, a different way, a new way in relationships of treating each other, a new way in our careers and our businesses of streamlining things, a new way of, um, in our own personal lives, identifying our own personality and where we need to maybe make some changes or embrace our own uniqueness. This is about coming into light and allowing things to be brought into light in order for deep healing. Because like I said, that planet Chiron is really going to come into play after the 20th of the month when we've got Jupiter and um, Uranus coming together, which is going to amplify sudden unexpected change, but it erupts something for our betterment. So even though it could be difficult, it's going to be something that in the end you'll say, oh, I'm so glad that happened. The thing with Uranus transits, which is what we're going to be having on the 20th for all, everyone, is and it's in Taurus, so wherever Taurus is in your chart, the thing about Uranus transits and the upset part, the eruption that comes, the, the quick unexpected change is we cannot understand or see why it's happening when we're in it. You just can't. That's, that's Uranus signature. It's afterwards. When it's happening, we feel like we've been taken to a, a strange place, like where the heck am I? But once we get through that, then we go on a path to a new way a different relationship with ourselves, a different way to relate to things, it brings in a higher level of consciousness. That's why whatever was no longer serving us gets kind of bumped out of your life. Um, you know, I'm in an industry now, real estate, where uh, the industry is really changing and it's a lot of changes, but optimistically, because I know the astrology is, it's going to bring a higher octave to the uh, industry. It's going to bring a higher octave of professionalism and a lot of really good things. It's just getting through it. And when it's happening, when it first happens, we don't understand why. And now we're starting to have some clarity on that. It's the same way with other things that are going on in our lives. 
So if you have any questions, put them in the chat. You can also call into the show. Bobby, if you're back there, if you want to put the phone number of the show on the screen, that would be great. Okay, so I'm going to pick my first cards are going to be four, who's the first one on tonight was, I think, Debbie Ann. So, Debbie Ann, I'm going to pick some cards for you. Um, okay, I don't know when Debbie Ann's birthday is, but I'm getting like a fall. I don't know why I'm getting like a Virgo kind of a energy. Um, so Debbie on the first is the right side up. First card that I picked for you was the Eight of Pentacles. And the Eight of Pentacles um, is definitely a um, card of abundance. It's a card of coin. The coin in the tarot are literal abundance. It could be spiritual abundance or material abundance. If anybody wants to call in to the show tonight, it's 516-945-9099. No. I'm sorry. 516-945-9099 no. because I know some of you, a lot of you listen and don't watch. So that's great. You can always catch me later on Spotify, all podcast platforms. You can even ask Alaska, Alexa to play the soul space with Georgia Rose. I'll be on there. I'm also on um, cable optimum on channel 115 at noon on Fridays. Um, so the lover's card came in for you, Debbie Ann, after the uh, Eight of Pentacles. And then the other card that I picked is the King of Wands. So typically in a tarot spread like this, this story would be abundance, um, good luck coming in. But I also have the lover's card, which does not mean the lover's in tarot the way we think. The lover's card in tarot is a card of interference in a relationship. In the um, card, you can see that the lover's card has two people and a mountain in, front, in, in between them. It can be a card of interference either from infidelity in a relationship or it can be a card of interference just because somebody's really just not into the other person and they're thinking about somebody else. It could also be an interference in a relationship like it's a pesky mother-in-law or someone who's a pain in the neck coming in between somebody. But I'm definitely getting that vibe here where there's something coming in between a relationship. It doesn't even have to be a romantic relationship. It could be work-related or situational, but definitely having to do with a King of Wands energy, which is a male fire sign that's going to be a Leo, an Aries, um, a Sagittarius, male. And I'm seeing that there is something to do with this person that you've got interference. But I feel like you're attached to it, and it may be an attachment due to some kind of a... Um, financial because I've got the pentacles there. Fourth card that I picked for this spread that I'm laying on top is the um, wands. It is the seven of wands, which is an action card. The seven of wands is competition. And I laid it right over the lovers, which is telling me that this is definitely competing for someone's attention, whether that's in a romantic way or another way. That's what it's about. The pentacles are kind of leaning me towards this being a job situation. Could even be a romance at the job. So Whatever is happening, there is definite competition here. What you're thinking and suspecting in your intuition is true. I can tell you that right now because I'm getting that energy. And you're not going to get the recognition that you deserve. Um, if you're looking and competing for the energy in order to get you yourself recognition, I don't believe it's going to happen. Or if it does happen, it's far out in a timeline. So if I were you, I would focus a little bit more on myself than whatever this energy is. I hope that makes sense to you and you can take that reading with you for your own growth and I hope that was valuable. Next person that I'm going to pick is going to be uh, Deneen Katz. So Deneen, I hope things are going well with you. So I want to see what you guys thought about the eclipse. You know, what did you guys think about the eclipse? Okay, so Deneen, this is for you. I've got another pentacles here. I have the um, six of pentacles. Six of pentacles is a card that is about having money in balance and also being generous with your money. Then I've got in reverse the queen of pentacles, which I kind of suspect is you, Deneen. So I feel like the energy may be out of balance. Perhaps you're giving too much to other people and you need to pull back and think about yourself. And then I have this card in the right side up, which is a grief card. 
um, the um, Five of Cups. The Five of Cups is a lot of emotion. It's an emotional thing. So what I feel like I should say to you, and again, you know, if this doesn't resonate, no, no harm, no foul, but I feel like maybe you're giving too much of yourself to those that are not taking you seriously. Um, and it's causing you a little bit of grief, causing you some pain, some anguish, some feeling like maybe of self-worth not being there. I feel like the resolution for this, and I'm going to pick this card because it's probably going to confirm it, but I'm not going to look at it until I say this. You take yourself seriously and you know what you're worth. And that is the energy you need to go into because I feel like where you're giving is very much unrequited and unreciprocated. Uh, and that's just how I'm feeling. So I'm going to turn over this card and see how it fits into the spread. And yep, I got the page of cups, which like your cup running over, runneth over. You can see he's got a fish in the cup, like abundance. Um, this is your giving. You're absolutely, that card confirms it for me. You're giving too much to others and not enough to yourself. You need to pull back and fill your own cup and drink. Um, it's one of my favorite expressions is always to ask people, um, do you rush home to feed your pets? but you go hungry, like you didn't eat yet, but you're gonna rush home and feed the pets even though you probably have to eat lunch. Gotta feed yourself first, because if you're not well fed, no one's feeding the pets. So definitely pull back and spend some time, money, energy, and nourishment, nourishment on yourself. Gonna pull one more card, because I'm getting told to do that, and this is about the emperor. So if someone is being a little bit tyrannical in your life, or someone is sitting on the throne, while you kind of run yourself ragged or worry, worry, worry about everything, pull it back and uh, put yourself more in balance for caring for yourself and giving yourself the nourishment that you need. Go get a mani-pedi and have a massage, for God's sakes. <laughs> That's my remedy to everything. I'll never forget one time when my life was completely falling apart back in 2011 and my neighbor came over and he knew the whole story of everything that happened and he said, you know what, just go get a pedicure. <laughs> and I was like, What? but it helped. And ever since then, whenever things are really looking bad, I just go get a pedicure. For that half hour, 40 minutes, I just let it go. And usually when I go to leave the salon, I feel so much better and I have an idea on how to get through something. So it's really pretty cool. So if anybody wants to talk to me tonight, phone number is 516-945-9099. Uh, next card is going to be for Joanna Maya. Whoops. I know you guys love it when I play with cards, but haven't done this in a while. The psychic energy has really been off the charts too lately. Here's Bobby. I'm going to read you on the show sometime. Come on in here. Come on in the shot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have an ink mark on it. No, I'm not going to tell my secrets. Look, this is Bobby's arm. <laughs> it's my producer, Bob. Bobby Lassara. Hey, ladies, he's single. <laughs> he's going to kill me now. <laughs> he's like, oh, please. <laughs> he's ready. Okay. He's a good guy. All right. So who am I picking a card for here? I forgot now. It was uh, Joanna Maya. So Joanne, first card I'm picking is the judgment card. This is about health. I know a lot of people think that um, judgment means, oh, no, something bad. I'm going to get judged. Sorry, I'm so thirsty tonight because um, I did a class today and I talked for like two hours. Um I'm talking again now. <laughs> and my Mercury retrograde is in my birth chart. Okay, so the judgment card for you, Joanna Maya. So the judgment card is a card of health. That's why we see this red cross in, the, in it. But it's also a card of rebirth and rejuvenate. So I hope I'm not picking up the energy I got from Deneen and overlapping. But I'm going to tell you, I feel like you are depleted and maybe a little dehydrated like I am right now. And I think that you need to give yourself replenishment and nourishment as well. Seems to be a theme that's going to come up a lot tonight. So I'm just going to say for everybody, especially us ladies out there, um, take time to replenish. I think sometimes when we're having a month where, like we have where there's so many transits and so many planetary changes that we can definitely get depleted of energy. So make sure that you're really taking great care of yourselves and go out in the sun. Now you guys saw me shuffle, shuffle, shuffle these cards. I just got the lovers in reverse. So that means, Joanne, that whatever was interfering in a relationship for you, that energy is now passing. Um, it's passed. You're at the tail end of it. It's almost done. So if there was someone coming between you and a relationship or even an issue between you and a relationship, that's waning now. That energy is moving. 
And then I have right side up the Knight of Swords. The Knight of Swords is what I refer to as my 911 card. So it's an emergency. It's like something needs to get taken care of right away. That's the, um, the uh, Knight of Wands. And when the Knight of Wands comes in in a spread like this, it really is speaking to me that whatever was interference in that relationship, it's a new beginning. That's really what the Judgment card is about. New beginning, the interference in the relationship is over. You may have a redo on that. It is Mercury retrograde, depending on where Mercury is in your chart. It could be a romantic redo. It could be just a redo with a relationship of any kind, even familial. And the Knight of, um, I got to read this. The Knight of Swords comes in and it's like suddenly you need to make a move. You need to take an action. Because we have Mercury in retrograde, I would be very careful about how you communicate what you want to, but this is like another chance at something. And there's the Wheel of Fortune card, which is one of the luckiest cards in the deck, everything being in alignment. So to me, this is confirmation. If there is something that needs to be reconciled, um, talk to that person. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's reconciled for the rest of your life or permanently. It just means that that particular issue is coming into play again to be reconciled. Um, I hope that makes sense and resonates with you. And Monica, my beautiful lady, Monica. Love Monica. Monica's got good energy tonight. I can feel you. Feeling a little joy there. Um, Monica, whenever I go into your energy, I always feel animals. And I know you, you, you're a dog lover. I feel like maybe you just got a new pet of some kind or you're contemplating getting a new pet. I feel like that's definitely coming in for you. Um, I'm just seeing that around you or somebody that you know, somebody in the family or something just got a new pet. Bobby, is the camera on the cards on the table? Yeah. Okay. Ace of Swords, new beginnings, completely new. Ace of Swords for you, Monica, is like the Ace of Swords is one of the best cards in the deck. It's almost like um, a rebirth, a baptism. You can see this beautiful sword of the hand of God giving us an opportunity and all covered in all new growth and leaves and wreath, meaning all new things. And again, you guys keep seeing me shuffle. This lover's card comes up again. So I think maybe the reason why that's coming up so much in this energy is because we've got an energy for April where things are, are coming to either a climax or a culmination. And so maybe this is really indicative of those interferences in relationships um, easing. They're, for you, it's moving, moving out, but it's still there a little bit. This card will tell us, I just got the Knight of Swords again, and you guys saw me shuffle these cards. Let me shuffle right in the middle of this reading, and I'm going to pick two more cards for, because that energy is redundant. Wow. Strong energy, but this card's beautiful. Um, same thing, you know, except the Lover's card was in reversed in the last spread. This is about reconciliation, coming into an energy where you need a do-over. And sometimes in life, life gives us do-overs. The cosmos gives us do-overs just so that we can go back and understand ourselves better. It doesn't necessarily mean that we end up with that person. In your case, Monica, I feel like it's a family member, though. The emperor, you just saw me shuffle again. Emperor card came up again. That's what happened last time. So weird that we're getting this redundant en energy. Um, I think it's just reflecting the cosmos. So if there's someone in your life that's like, you know, sitting on the throne waiting for you to come to them, I think it might be time for you to go. Um, but maybe this is going to show you your own strength as opposed to, you know, reconciling and going to someone. You know, one of the themes of this month is um, forgiveness. And like I said before, I want to do one more card for you. Ace of Cups. The Ace of Cups and the Ace, two Aces in one spread is very rare. The Ace of Cups and the Ace of Swords, both new beginnings. This Ace of Cups is soulmate energy. When we see the Ace of Cups in a reading, it's like the marriage card. It's like the, the soulmate energy lifetime relationship. So whatever it is in your life, Monica, that has been interfered in, know that that is healing that something's going to happen suddenly and that there is a rebirth and a redo and a reconciliation. Definitely reconcile. This card is reconciliation all over it. Um, so what I started to say was there's a very big theme of forgiveness in this month's energy in the cosmos. And like I said, not just forgiveness of others who may have, you know, hurt us or done things to us and us forgiving ourselves maybe for things that we have done, but also 
that it is an energy of forgiving people who don't know what we know and vice versa. You know, a lot of times people do things because they don't know any better and maybe we've learned that lesson, but they haven't and vice versa. And this is what's coming up in the cards, I think, why we keep seeing that lovers and those reconciliation cards. I'm shuffling these on camera so you guys can see that those cards that keep coming up, it's just an anomaly. Whoop. And the, the cards spill out and the judgment card comes up again, which is all rebirth. And we just had a solar eclipse, which is all new energy. The Aries energy is off the charts, which is all new energy, new direction too. Man, you can't make this stuff up. Okay, who's my next card today? Um, Sarah, my beautiful Sarah. Sarah's such a longtime client of mine and just love her energy. Cutting the deck fresh for you, honey. All right, we got the Ace of Pentacles. We've had every Ace come out tonight and Aces are all new beginning, which is so fitting for the Aries energy. So Ace of Pentacles means there are new beginnings in finances. And then we have the Death card. Whoa, 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 don't freak out. The Death card is not a literal death. Um, unless it's surrounded by certain other cards, which is not here. Um, the death card in the tarot spread means that it's a rebirth. And we seem to have that theme in every spread tonight. So why am I not surprised? And then the next card is the four of pentacles, which also for me is very much in alignment with the ace of pentacles. So this is about new direction with money. This is about new rebirth with money and balancing money. It's all about financial issues for you tonight. And then look at this beautiful... Um, nine of pentacles that came in which is a card of complete and total abundance it is the queen um with all the pentacles around her and the thing about the tarot is color is very important when you read tarot she's surrounded by gold and as you can see there's all kinds of flowers on her robe which means abundance and new growth so there's a lot of symbolism in the tarot cards and so when you learn to read tarot you're going to see why things are the what they mean um, I read psychically, so the cards have a symbol symbolism for me, which is traditional, but also for me, sometimes the way I read them isn't always traditional because I have my own dictionary in my psychic head. Um, but this card is a really important card for this spread because it's confirming the reading for me that as long as you are respectful and conservative with funds, with money, with material possessions, and that you d are, are th respectful in the sense of gratitude and also understand value that you will have great abundance in your life. Whatever enough is for you, you will have it. And enough is different for all of us. I'm going to pick one more card to confirm your reading, Sarah. And I got the King of Wands. That means a fire sign male is absolutely playing into this energy in some way. So I hope that helps and that you um, take that with you. Next up is going to be... Um, Cheryl, Cheryl, yo, hi. Cheryl is one of my co-workers and very, very good energy on Cheryl. Cheryl is like a little sparkly energy. I don't think she's been feeling very sparkly lately, but we're going to fix that, hopefully. I'm a terrible shuffler, even though I do shuffle. I'm going to tell you right now that I will never get a job in Vegas. I'm shuffling on camera because I want you guys to know I am at judgment card again. What the hell is going on with this judgment card? Judgment card is all about, oh, wait a second. Let me, if it comes up again, I'm going to show you guys something with the judgment card. Um, judgment card is all about rebirth. Yeah, it came up again. Why well, I'm not surprised. So this card, guys, I'm going to just teach you a little bit about tarot here. This card, before I pull cards for um, Cheryl, this card, the reason why it says judgment on it, obviously, is because we've got people in this card uh, being risen, being reborn, and the symbolism is very much in traditional tarot, like a rebirth. You, um, It's judgment day, but you're being reborn. For me, the symbolism goes a little bit deeper. Um, this is Archangel Gabriel, this symbolism in here, and he's blowing his horn. So this messages. So it means that you're being reborn, but it's also a time when you can really get highly intuitive and psychic messages when this card comes up. So really listen to the intuition. Um, and I'm going to tell you, Cheryl, to listen to your intuition because I know you have a very sharp one and um, you want to go into that higher octave. So we've got the two of pentacles. So if you're worried about any kind of material possession or money, don't be. It's absolutely in balance for you. That card shows that. The next card I have is the strength card. And when we're just talking about your intuition, the strength card is the Leo card for some. It's also a card of 
quiet strength. We don't have to get into power struggles and battles in order to win over the lion. We need to believe in our own power over goodwill and being able to have compassion and empathy in order to really be powerful. And that's how this lion tamer card, as I like to call it, when someone tames a lion, they don't beat him into submission. They bring the lion around to their way of thinking through charm and reward and, and empathy. And so the strength card shows us that our true strength is within us, not in the outside world in a power struggle. I have the Hierophant in the reverse position. The Hierophant is a card of non-traditionalism. If you've been trying to do things in a traditional way, you may want to change it up, find a new direction based on your own strengths. Remember, you are the asset in your life, not our material possessions. And when we balance the material with the spiritual, like we see here with the two of pentacles, that's when we find our greatest strength and we start to be in alignment with our full potential. Card to confirm that reading is the Wheel of Fortune, which means the card of everything being in alignment. So the resolution for the energy for you that I think is being challenged with you, uh, Cheryl, is going within, finding your own strength, your own empathy, and your own balance of you being your own asset not relying on externals. And then there you will find doing things in a non-traditional way that things go back into balance, like the Wheel of Fortune is saying for you. Okay, so you can take that with you and hopefully that resonates. Um, next up is Trish Johnston, because I did Debbie Ann, so this is Trish Johnston's card. Uh, Trish, hope you're doing really well. I'm going to pick three cards for you, they're telling me. You can see me shuffling, shuffling, shuffling. Okay, Trish, we've got the Ace of Pentacles. Man, you can't get away from Aces tonight, guys. Aces are all new beginning. It's because we have so many planets in Aries, and Aries is the first sign of the zodiac, zero point energy, and is a completely new direction. We just had a solar eclipse in Aries being revealed, anything that needs to come to light. And again, we've got the beautiful, compassionate, nine of pentacles so again abundance 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 is coming to you and this is a card of um also nostalgia if you're thinking about you know something very nostalgic or an energy where um you're thinking about a time maybe when you felt more abundant just realize that your abundance is right now where it is uh, this card is in reverse which i like to call my tiny tim card this is a really important card for this spread because we have a spread with all pentacles, which means abundance. It means it can be coin. It can be, you know, real money. But a true abundance, we all know, is love and joy and expanding that in our life and our soul space. This card being in reverse means that you really need to um, work on this presently because the energy is going to be resolved as long as you realize it and become aware this energy, if you look, it's got two people who are really in deprivation and they're walking past this beautifully lit church window full of pentacles or coin, which is a symbolization of the source of abundance being faith, love, joy, empathy. And so these people are in so much detriment that they're looking down. They don't realize that where the abundance lies and the abundance really lies with soul and source. So what you want to do when you're thinking about abundance and where abundance is in your life for you, new direction means really going within and finding that place where you have abundance no matter what's around you. And once you relax and go into that place, I think the actual material abundance comes. So be grateful. These are, this is a reading of gratitude. And uh, sometimes we lose sight of that. I'm not saying you have, but I think that maybe just go into that a little bit more and um, maybe things will you know, come in better for you, Trish. Um, we all get those down times. I feel like you have abundance in your life and you just need to be a little more aware of it and realize the abundance coming from within you. And that's going to make you feel so much happier. Next up is going to be Marie. Marie. I'm just going to shuffle this way because obviously the universe is playing tricks on us with the shufflings. Ah, uh, finally, new cards. M M Marie, I got the Wands card for you, the Nine of Wands, which is a card of action. It's also a card of waiting to take t the right time to take the right action. Timing is everything here. We've got the Queen of Cups, which is either a female energy around you. I don't feel like that card is representative of you. 
It will be a water sign female. You're waiting for the right time to have the conversation, make the move. Very good timing is everything. I think this is a family situation for you because the card that I just got is the uh, uh, Six of Cups. And this is a card of something within the family, nostalgia, um, you know, maybe opening up something in the family that was a past conflict or a past competition. And the Queen of Cups is the energy of emotion. And I think the way to resolve this energy is through action, perfectly timed and empathy. And King of Pentacles is sitting on the throne. And that's the card of strategy and strategic um, advancement. So whatever you're trying to resolve in your life right now, Tri um, uh, Marie, I would definitely time it well. You know, this is not a month to be impulsive, although the, all the Aries energy that we have in the air is going to make us impulsive. So try to really sit on your hands for a little while and time things perfectly if there's a conflict in your life that you need to resolve. Uh, next up is going to be Marianne Sabatino. Marianne, they're telling me actually to pick two cards for you. I'm going to cut the deck into threes. Marianne, they're telling me to pick two cards for you. I have the um, eight of pentacles, uh, seven of pentacles in reverse. And I've got the um, Eight of Cups right side up. So what these two cards show me, um, Marianne, is that you have a lot of abundance in your life. You have a lot of wealth, but you're still a little bit disappointed with what you have. There's something missing. Um, I think that you need to look up, not down. And by that, I mean don't focus on the lack. Focus on the abundance. Because the next card I got is you work, walking away from a difficult situation. Um, and in, it's an emotional situation, but you have to move yourself forward out of it. And these two cards are really almost in opposite type of energy. So what I'm going to say to you is make sure that you are going out in nature. You know, we're coming on to gardening season now, things like that, because you have to lift yourself up. There's a lot of abundance surrounding you, but you're not seeing it. And I feel like the emotional things that are dragging you down, you are going to walk away from. You're definitely going to walk away from them. So take that with you and make sure that you are really looking around you for all of the things that are so beautifully promising for you and that the abundance you have in your life. Um, oh, thank you, Joanne. I'm just going to scroll down to see what comments I have. Um, Deneen says she's been seeing a lot of angel numbers, 1111. Um, yes, when we see 1111, it's a very good... Um, sign because it means that we are having a bit of a little spiritual contact or a higher consciousness coming into our lives. 1111 to me looks like, you know, it looks like this and doors opening. All right. Many times we'll see 1111 when we're getting just connected to consciousness, connected to soul. Um, Bobby, there's a bot on there um, under the name of love spell. We got to delete. Um, And there's another one, Michelle Knight. We'll get those off at the end of the show. Um, yeah, somebody just like totally ghosted the whole thing. Uh, see, Kathy says she's going to go out and get a Manny Petty. That's absolutely great. We should all go. We should have a Manny Petty party. They're saying hi to you, Bob. Um, so I'm going to pick one more card. I got like four minutes left. So Monica says, wow, thanks for just great insight. Angel num numbers have been coming up a lot. I have to tell you guys, I know I'm running out of time, but I just want to tell you that angels are so prominent right now in the, in the world. I just, just believe that we're so protected. So definitely whenever you're having those low moments or those fearful moments, go into the um, angel energy, go into angels, call them in. You know, you guys know I work with the angelic realm quite a bit. So Julie, I'm going to pick one card for you because that's all I have time for. And I've got this beautiful six of cups for you, Julie. And, you know, I got to tell you, that card is making me feel very um, nostalgic for you and all the great times that we had. I hope this summer I get to spend some time with you and we get to have some great times again. Um, so, Julie, if you are feeling nostalgic for other times and other people, just know that you are going to have that feeling fulfilled for you. If you're feeling wistful or like something is missing, that is absolutely going to be fulfilled. This card is showing me that. Look at all the beautiful um, 
you know, cups surrounding her and the flowers in the cups. So just take that with you. Um, so I want to thank you all for tuning in tonight. And please come back next uh, Monday night at 7 o'clock for the Soul Space. In the meantime, you can always um, like me on Facebook, Zenkuda Soul Space, and Instagram, Zenkuda Official. I do put up a lot of videos on Zenkuda YouTube from time to time, so subscribe on there. I'm probably going to be putting a couple on this week about the um, astrology and some ways that we can use this to really guide our life. I hope this show is meaningful and valuable for you. Share it if you think so. And if you didn't get a card tonight, you can always reach out to me, PM me if I'm getting any kind of hits or any kind of energy, I'll definitely answer. Thank you so much. And I hope to see you guys all back here next Monday at seven o'clock in the soul space. And until then, make sure that you take some time to go into your own soul space and really be able to access those things that are going to bring you to your full potential. Thanks so much. And I'll see you next week.